Java, we have several ways to create immutable classes. Now, the common way is to create a final class with final fields and a constructor to initialize these fields. The only issue is that sometimes these classes can become bogus. We have our accessors to the field. We have our two string, probably also other methods like equals, hash code. And, you know, when you're teaching a new programmer, this can seem too much in the beginning for something so simple. Now, we have records and records make this easy. The compiler creates a canonical constructor for you. Now, the constructor takes the components of your record as arguments and copies their values to the fields of the record classes. For each component of the record, a final field is created. So, if you have x and y, each of these components has a corresponding final field created. Let's go to the code and see this in practice. So normally we have our class that looks like this. In this class, our, the name of our class is called point. We have two final fields, x and y. Notice that we have our constructor. We use this constructor to initialize our final fields, x and y. We also have getters x, y. We have our two string and sometimes we have more methods than are present here. Sometimes we have hash code and the rest. And if you look at the code in this class, it's very trivial and there is nothing so special in, for example, the getters or the two string. This is just a placeholder class. And instead of having such a bogus class, we're going to have a very simple line. That is where I'm going to show you how records work. Currently, if we want to call a new instance of the class, we call new point. And if we print it out, we can see the two string. However, we have an alternative, which is record. That whole class, if we wanted it to be in a record, this is how it will look. We have public record, then the name of the record. Then we have the two components and their type. In this case, we have X and Y. It will create a corresponding final field of these two components. Now, there are certain things you cannot add to a record. You cannot declare any instance field in a record and you cannot define any field initializer. You cannot add any instance initializer. So this is us using our record. In the top, we have the normal class structure. And below, we see using record just like any other normal class. We call new point record, passing our arguments x and y. And when we get our instance, we see that we can print out the record. Now, without initializing or implementing a two string in the point record class, we can already see that it has a two string, a default two string ready in a normal class if you don't implement the toString method you will normally see the object representation of the class so go try this out go try playing around with records there are a lot more you can do with it you can play around with the canonical constructor you can also add and customize your own a little bit so records are not that rigid that you can't add anything you can add some things but not as much as you will in the class now, the next thing we're going to treat is sealed classes in Java. Now, this is very interesting because 
to silly class, all you need to do is to add the sealed modifier to the declaration. After that, you can work on working with the extends, implements, and permits clause. We have our class here called ship. It has a length and width. So sometimes you might want to control who can inherit a particular class. By default, if we just create our class shape, anybody can inherit it. But when it comes to sealed classes, you can make a class sealed and then permit certain classes that can inherit it. Don't worry, I'm going to demonstrate this. So for example, let's say we have a class here called car. Car extends shape. Remember that extends in Java helps us to inherit. Our parts from car, we have our square that extends shape and circle extends shape. So by default, there's no error because everybody can extend shape. Now let's say we make our class shape sealed. Already there's a problem because when you make a class sealed, no one can inherit or extend that class unless they are permitted. So we're going to go to the class shape and permit two classes, the square and the circle. We have uh, another problem. All subclasses of sealed classes must either be final, sealed, or non-sealed. Once a class is a subclass of a sealed class, it can either be final, final meaning it can no longer be extended, it can either be sealed, Sealed is a little bit different from final because sealed can only be extended by its permitted subclasses. The final option is for it to be non-sealed, which it can be extended by unknown subclasses. So that one is open-ended. Let's see. We have one issue here. Car still extends shape. We have to remove it because it's no longer permitted. And everything is fine and good. So we have our sealed class ship permits square and permits circle. So remember, like I said, you can actually make each of the subclasses either sealed, non sealed, or final once they are subclasses of a sealed class. Now, let's say I extend circle. There is no issue here because circle is non-sealed. So, but assuming I decide to extend square, I have a problem. I have a problem because square has a limitation on who can extend it. So these are sealed classes. It hasn't always been in Java. So in case you haven't been around in Java or been updated, you should try it out and see how it makes your code cleaner. Mm -hmm.